1989, John Osteen has spent 50 years of ministry showing you that miracles do happen. Stay tuned, because your miracle could be coming your way today. of compassion. Reaching the unreached and telling the untold. Proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, from Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas, Dodie Osteen. We welcome you today to our telecast, and I'm so glad for all of you who write us and tell us about how you are blessed by our programs. I recently got a letter from a, a friend of ours that we have corresponded with. Some of our people have written because she's fighting a disease in her body, and she doesn't have cable TV where she lives, back up in the mountains in Pennsylvania. But she said the man who owns the bookstore, who lives 25 miles from her, tapes our program every Sunday night and once a month takes them to her there in the mountains. And it's such a blessing to her. She said, my husband and I watch your program over and over and over. And how blessed the people there at Lakewood are to have a church and body of believers like you are. So... Thank the Lord for this church, this oasis of love. We're glad you've joined us by television today, and now we're fixing to go into the message, and I want the people here pleased to welcome the pastor, John Osteen. Thank you very much. Well, the Lord is worthy to be praised. You may... You may uh, stand to your feet, if you will, and take your Bible. And you folks on television, we do welcome you. And this is what we do at every service. And if you haven't seen us do it, you need to get used to doing it yourself. Hold up your Bible and make the devil mad and Jesus glad. Wave them around a little bit. This is our confession. All right, say it. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want you to open your Bible to Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. I want to remind you here that I am your pastor. I want to remind the television audience, I am not a televangelist. I am a telepastor. Amen. Amen. So I, I, I don't claim to be an evangelist. I'm a pastor. God set me in the body of Christ as a pastor. So when you tune in this program, you can say, well, here is one of my pastors. You know, you need more than one pastor. You need a lot of pastors. I, you need a local church, of course. And, uh, and you need a, a place where you have a local pastor, but that doesn't mean other pastors can't bless you. All the fivefold ministry are needed to grow. All right, Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Here it is in the Amplified Version. And let the peace, the soul harmony that comes from Christ, rule and act as an umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your hearts. Now, I'm going to talk about following peace. I'm going to talk to you as Christians today. There may be thousands of people who are viewing by television and many here who are not Christians, who are not ready to meet God. But I am teaching you who know the Lord today. Well, it's wonderful to have peace. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. One thing that Jesus came to do is to stop the war between uh, uh, the fallen race and God's righteousness. So, when Jesus came, the Bible says that he, uh, uh, that he put away sin, 
that he cleared a path whereby all the human race can come to God. And uh, he, uh, he made peace by the death of his cross. Oh, it's wonderful to face the world and all that it stands for and have the peace of God. It's wonderful in the storms and the vicissitudes of life, all of the mountains and the valleys of life. It's wonderful to have the peace of God. You see, peace with God and the peace of God is something money cannot buy. To be able to lie down at night, to be able to face a, a life in all of its uh, uh, challenges and to have peace is wonderful, 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 wonderful. And we're here to tell you that you can have not only peace with God, but the peace of God, and you can have that in your heart. Now, this peace that comes in us is to be activated constantly either in a negative way or in a positive way. This peace of God is God's presence in our lives. You know, in the Old Testament, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, which is a type of our salvation, and when they were headed for the promised land, which is a type of heaven for us, in one sense of the word it is, uh, that, that is a picture of our salvation. Now, when they came out, what did they have to guide them with? They did not know how to get through the wilderness. They did not know how to order their lives day by day, so God gave them a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. And so God said, when the pillar moves to the left, you, uh, you go out that way. When the, when the cloud moves to the left, you go out that way. When it stops, you stop. When it moves, you move. When it advances in this direction, you just follow the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. So their lives were very, very uncomplicated. It would, God made it real simple for these people. He said, all you have to do, you know, if you were to come to one of them and say, aren't you worried about God, following God out here in this wilderness? Do you know where to go? Do you know where to stop? Do you know where to camp? Do you know where uh, to turn right and to turn left? Why, they say, no. No, it's not complicated. God Almighty has made it real, real simple. Well, tell me about it. What do you have to do? All I have to do is get up and go out to the front of my tent and look around and see where the cloud is. And when it begins to move, I begin to move. And when it begins to turn left, I turn left. When it turns right, I turn right. When it stops, I, talk, I stop. I don't have any problems. I've got solutions. I've got the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. So in the middle of the night, if somebody blows a trumpet and shouts around through the camp, the pillar of fire is moving, rise up, rise up. Well, all I have to do is just get up and get ready to go. My, 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 it's wonderful to have God treat me so. I know where to go and how to go. I know when to turn left and when to turn right. I know when to stop. I know when to advance. See, all I have to do is watch the pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day. Made it real simple. Listen to this scripture. The Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place with one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. Everybody say fire three times. Fire, fire, fire. Say, my God is a consuming fire. My God is a consuming fire. Those tongues of fire appeared upon them, and they were all filled, filled with what? Filled with that fire filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. What was it? God, who was in that pillar of fire, moved on the inside of his people. So the pillar of fire is on the inside of the Christian today. It's wonderful to have God for us. It's wonderful to have God with us, but it's more wonderful to have God in us. Can I have a better amen? Amen. So God is in us, that peace, that, that wonderful, tranquil state that we call the peace of God is on the inside of us. Now the Bible says here, let the peace of God rule and act as an umpire. Do you know we need to keep our bodies going in the way our spirits go? David said, you have made my feet like hinds feet so that I go up on the high places. Now, what does he mean, like hind's feet? Did you know a hind or, or, or other animals that, uh, you know, like deer and other, you know, they, they do what they call tracking. They tra you can't climb on a high mountain unless you know how to track. What does track mean? It means that that back foot lands exactly where the front foot lands. So if the front foot is, is stable, 
They don't have to worry about the back foot. They just step in there. They track it. And they're able to go in the high places. How many of you want to climb high places for God? Say amen. amen. Well, the Bible says that we are spirit and we are body. You see, sometimes our body goes in one direction and our spirit is saying, no, go this direction. In order to do something for God, you've got to get to tracking. You've got to get your physical feet where your spiritual feet are. And then we can climb on our high places. But many times we are pulled in one direction, our bodies go in this direction, our minds go in this direction, and our spirits go in this direction. Now that's what this is talking about. Let the peace of God rule and act as an umpire in your heart. Now what does an umpire do? An umpire basically does this. An umpire either calls you safe or unsafe, which means out. Everybody say safe, safe. Unsafe. unsafe. See, an umpire is out there to tell the players whether they are in the safe area or in the unsafe or the out area. So the Bible says, let the peace of God, this presence of God in you that gives you such joy, such a tranquil state, such a priceless uh, 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 joy in your heart, let that be the umpire. Let that, uh, let that tranquil state of peace, either by its presence or absence, either tell you that you're in a safe area or you're in an unsafe area. Now the Bible says, let the, let the peace of God act as an umpire, rule continually like an umpire, either calling you out or calling you safe, and settling with finality. I like that statement. Settling with finality. I mean, there's no more words after this is over. It settles it in the final state. No questions, no arguments. When that peace calls you safe, that settles it forever. If that peace calls you in an unsafe area, that settles it, you're wrong. Let the peace of God rule in your heart, acting as an umpire, settling with finality, all questions that arise in your mind. See, your mind is the battlefield. You see, when Judas got ready, uh, you know, had given himself over uh, to unbelief, the Bible says that, that the devil suggested to, to, to Judas, suggested. One translation says suggested. See, sometimes the devil would just suggest something. And then it says he put it into the mind, put the thought in the mind of Judas. The devil cannot, cannot reach your spirit, Christians, but he can reach your mind. That's the reason the Bible says, you know, he put the thought into, the, into Judas's mind. And when Judas accepted the thought, then the Bible says, and Satan entered in to Judas. If you will accept Satan's thought, he can have ground inside of you. He can have a foothold in your life. He betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, but it all began with a suggestion in his mind. That's the reason the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, Therefore I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed, transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. We need to get God's word in our mind because the devil is going to come and he's going to, he's going to put questions on you. We would never be able to live for God if we did not understand this scripture. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding decide and act as an umpire, rule and act as an umpire, deciding with finality all questions that arise in your minds. We don't know everything about the will of God. A lot of social uh, graces and and things that are not graces of work in one section of, uh, uh, of the world and uh, not uh, necessarily apply to this part of the world. There are different cultures and cultural background, so you're going to have to have something on the inside of you tell you what's right and wrong. Thank God you don't have to go up to heaven, you don't have to go down to hell, you don't have to search all through the earth. you got the answer on the inside of you. For instance, if Dodie and I are living in joyous peace and we have an argument 
and I say some bad things to Dodie and lash her with my tongue. You know what's going to, you know what's going to happen in my heart? Way down on the inside, that umpire will call me out and unsafe. You are in an unsafe area. You're in an unsafe area. What does it mean? You're out there where the devil can get a hold of you. You better get out of that unsafe area. Thank God for peace. Thank God for the umpire, which is peace. Thank God that I know exactly when the, when the umpire says unsafe. You know, I can just cover it up and cover it up and say, well, she provoked me. And it's her fault. I don't care what I say. I can't go by my mind. I've got to go by whether I've got peace or not. And I'm not going to get back in a safe area till I confess and get right with Dodie. How many of you have never had any trouble with your husband and wife? Let me see how many liars we got here. <laughs> how many of you have? Say amen. amen. How many of you know when you have an argument and, the, and something leaves you in there, that peace leaves you? Oh, you can go one or two days. You can go two or three days. But I'll tell you, you might as well just fess up right then because you're not going to get peace till you get right. Amen? Amen. So all questions that arise in your mind. Somebody said, well, can I do this in the world? Can I do this? Well, when you do it, do you have peace? Or are you just fooling yourself? Oh, my, I think I can be a Christian and do that. After all, my friends do that, and uh, they're lost, and I'm going to be out there. Maybe I can be a witness to them. You better be careful. You better look on the inside of you. Do not grieve the Holy Ghost by the way you live. How do I know what's wrong? How do I know what's right? You see, if you got your mind renewed with the Word of God, I'll tell you that new uh, creature down in there, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That new creature is in touch with God Almighty, and you either have peace or you don't have peace. Now, you know, this works in ministry also. For years, I, uh, uh, you know, I, I pastored a Baptist church, and uh, I didn't have any light on the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And, but I got light on that, and then I, I lost my peace because I, I would not yield to what God was showing me because I didn't want to stir up my nest. I was a Baptist born, Baptist bred, Baptist living, and Baptist dead. Not necessarily you, but I was. And, but I, I wouldn't obey. I said, Lord, if I get mixed up with that Holy Ghost bunch, I'll lose my church. I've got, I've got prestige. I've got, I've got this, that, and the other. So I lost my peace. I would not walk in the light. But you know when I got my peace? When I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And got to speaking in other tongues. Amen. Then I established this church, and uh, suddenly I didn't have any peace anymore. Uh, I felt a pulling to go out and to lift my voice uh, to the denominational world. And uh, I didn't have any peace staying here. So I told the leaders here, I said, I'm going to have to leave. You're going to have to get another pastor. And for eight years, I went all over the world, this nation and other nations, preaching and, and sharing the good news about uh, the full gospel. And then uh, as I began to uh, uh, minister in the Philippine Islands and linked over there some years over there, uh, going back and forth, suddenly I, I lost my peace. Now, now that's unusual because I couldn't stay out of the Philippine Islands. And I was at great peace when I was there. Well, now, what did it mean? I was in the will of God. But now John Osteen stay in the Philippines and peace moves someplace else. You see what I'm talking about? The same people, same islands, same messages, and yet my peace is gone. Well, what do I do? I've got to find out why I'm in an unsafe area. The umpire, peace, is saying, you're unsafe. You were in the will of God, and you were safe, but now God wants to do something else with you. And did you know God put it in my heart to come back and be pastor of this church? When you had about 90 to 100 people left in this church over there in that little feed store. And when I came here, I had perfect peace. Perfect peace. What does it mean? What does it mean? I had to find the safe area. I had to find where I had that peace again. And, and, and that works in all of your lives. How many of you know what it means to be restless in your spirit? Say amen. amen. How many of you know what it means to, to not have the peace that you used to have? Say yes. yes. You, you know it's in there. You need to follow. If you're doing something out there in the world and you lose your peace, you better examine yourself and see which way God moved. 
And listen, don't push down in your heart these in, in, inclinations from your spirit and try to smother the Holy Spirit and not listen to His voice. Many times, little things that we do uh, grieve the Holy Ghost. And we say, well, you know, everybody does it. Or, or you know, there's nothing, nothing really bad about it. It's just a little thing. Like not working like you ought to for the people that employ you. Like taking things from your office that don't belong to your little sticky fingers. <laughs> like buying things your little old beady eyes look at and you know you can't afford. Everybody say, God, God protect, me protect me from my beady eyes my and my sticky fingers. You know, say, well, well, after all, they got plenty of this. And plenty. Listen, when the Holy Ghost grieves on the inside of you and peace leaves, you better examine yourself. Amen. You know, if you look in your heart, you're not going to be a cocktail sipping, beer drinking, a profligate that chases after women and, uh, and, and men. You're not going to live in that area. You're going to find out the Holy Ghost is grieved and you're going to have to get in the safe area and get rid of all that sin. Amen. Amen. No child of God can commit adultery without grieving the Holy Ghost. No child of God can be a fornicator without driving peace out of your heart. No, you're not going to eat out of the garbage cans of the world and have peace. You may fool me. You may fool Doty. You may fool your family, but you won't feel, fool God. Because the Lord's on the inside of you. You've got to go to bed every night with the Lord. You've got to wake up with the Lord. And that, that, that peace that leaves you is a sign God went one direction and you went the other. You know, the most wonderful thing in the world is to have that peace. Everybody say this, nothing is forever. Nothing is forever. Say it again. Is and you see, when you don't have peace, be glad. Be glad because the Lord is getting you out of an unsafe area. Amen. What a joy it would be to all of us today to make the decisions that would immediately bring us peace. If you're not at peace with some individual, and you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that your, your friend has something, uh, brother has all against you, or your sister has all against you. Leave your gift, the Bible says. And go, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come offer your gift. That was kind of a quiet amen. amen. Let, let peace rule and act as an umpire. Safe, unsafe, continually, not just one time, but let it act, the peace act as an umpire, continually, continually, until you go to heaven. You know, it's wonderful to talk about this. Many of you may not know where you have missed it, but you know you have because you don't have peace. You need to get right with people. You need to get right with God. You need to get things out of your life. You need to surrender to His Lordship and let that peace continually guide you in now and in the days to come. Because if you've got peace in your heart, you are rich beyond words to explain. And our desire is to help you know how you can continually be guided and blessed by God by the peace of God that's in your hearts. Let's lift our hands and praise God for you. It's not too soon to make your plans for the 19th Annual Lakewood Church World Conference, April 15th through 20th at Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Join some of America's most outstanding speakers like John Osteen, Kenneth Hagan, T.L. Osborne, R.W. Shambach, and over 3,000 United States pastors and 2,000 international delegates from around the world as they celebrate the power of the Holy Spirit and teach you how to receive God's best for your life. That's the 19th Annual Lakewood Church World Conference, April 15th through 20th. And don't miss the opening night as John Osteen celebrates 50 years of ministry. Come be a part of this historic anniversary and enjoy a very special presentation. 
For more information, just write Lakewood Church, Box 23117, Houston, Texas, 77228. And we'll reserve your place at the 19th Annual Lakewood Church World Conference. Lakewood Church, an oasis of love in a troubled world. Come expecting to receive a miracle from God for your life. I'm so glad that you let us come into your home to teach you the Word of God every week. As I said earlier in the program, I'm not a televangelist. I'm just a pastor. I thank God I'm the pastor of this great Lakewood Church. We call it an oasis of love in a troubled world. We don't ask you for anything. We pay our own way. We come not to get, but to give. We want to give you the good news about the Word of God, how you can have happiness and peace and victory in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as we begin a new year, I believe one of the greatest things I could ever give you and encourage you to cooperate with, and that is messages from the Word of God. God has put on my heart to teach you just exactly like I teach the local Lakewood Church right here. And I'm going to do that as I start a series of messages next Sunday, and then we'll continue the next and the next and the next and the next. For several Sundays, I'm going to be teaching on the book of Ephesians. I'm convinced if you will stay with me and get the redemptive truth that's in the, in the Lord Jesus Christ as revealed in the book of Ephesians, I'm telling you, it will change your life. So stay tuned next week and the next and the next, and you'll be changed by the Word of God. Thank you again for letting us come into your home. We believe this coming year will be your best. Join Pastor John Osteen at the new Oasis of Love, Sundays at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., and Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. Lakewood Church, the Oasis of Love, is located off the 610 North Loop at 7400 East Houston Road in Northeast Houston. Each week, thousands of people from all denominations and all walks of life come together for an exciting time of fellowship and inspiration. You'll be blessed and uplifted by the compassionate ministry of Dodie Osteen and the dynamic, down-to-earth Bible teaching of Pastor John Osteen each week at the new Oasis of Love. I come to Lakewood because there's, it's home, there's warmth, it's, it's wonderful, I feel at home. I tell you, today's service is just the type of thing I expect at Lakewood. It's the truth, it's the Word of God, and, and we know that Brother Osteen is going to deliver that Word of God with a sincerity and a faithfulness, and he's not going to be afraid to, to speak up and say what God's Word says. I think Lakewood is a place where people of all different uh, personalities and nationalities can come under one roof and receive the Word of God and the love of God. The very atmosphere of being here, the, the Spirit of God that I sensed when I entered the place, I could just sense the Spirit of God, the very presence of God, and it was just so wonderful to be able to worship God.